I had to vote for video with feedback game. It wouldn't be the same without a little bit of outrage. So, uh, the Falcons policy? Yeah, let's give the Falcons <laughs> back to Argentina. Back? Did you hear what I just said? I said back. How mad are you? Tell me in the comments how mad you are right now. <laughs> hey, did you miss me? Did you enjoy all my Rome videos? Watch all my Rome videos. This is Hard to Find 4 and the Millennium Dawn Modern Day Mod, which has recently been revamped. Well, not recently, but I haven't checked up on it in a while. It was about six months ago. And this completely revamps the modern day period. Lots of politics and geopolitical situations. Ugh, wow. All the things we needed more in Heart of Iron 4, right? 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 Anyway, single player. New game. Two. 2000 United Kingdom. Look at this world. Beautiful. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but compared to Hearts of Iron 4, this is some pretty hardcore border gore, right? Look at all these colors. And Europe, look at all these colors. Look at these Balkan. Oh, so many colors. Anyway, United Kingdom. Historical turned on. Let us play the game. So I believe this mod gets requested quite often because a lot of people don't know how to play it. It changes some of the fundamental mechanics of Hearts of Mine 4 to where it kind of plays like a different game, which is actually kind of refreshing. A brand new game. So first of all, to understand the divisions, we're going to select all the divisions and we're going to delete the one that's just a basic light infantry, which is the green man. Little green man. Only go when you see the little green man. Oh, he's in Ireland. Cool. And we'll railroad him here and exercise him. That's right. One division trick, even in the mods as well. That's right. Research slots. Uh, you can only research military tech. It's all military stuff. There's a few doctrines built in here as well. So be careful what you research. Be aware that some of these do take a very, 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 very long time to research. Like 2,000 days. Yeah, that's going to take a long time. So try and go for the stuff that's more available to you right now. Here we go. Digital camouflage. Wow. 500 days. Everything seems to take a lot longer in this mod, so just be aware of that and research whatever. I don't know. I don't think it really matters. There's, there's so much tech in this game. It's a little bit overwhelming. And we're going to research the air doctrine, which is going to be, in this case, battlefield support. In the base game Hearts of Iron 4, industry and research techs are important to get early on. In Millennium Dawn mod, they don't exist. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Next up, we're going to build some civilian factories. We're going to prop in infrastructure on London. Why? Because it's got a lot of states. You can see it's red colored. Uh, if it goes from darkish red then to blue, those areas are mostly populated. Therefore, I have more building slots. More building slots means you can build more there. So I'm going to build that there. I'm going to pop that in uh, the northern England because that's where I live and give lots of jobs for the British northern people of Leeds. Okay, military factories. This is where it gets horrendously complicated. I'm going to advise you to left click here, hold shift left click and delete all these lines. It's better to start off afresh and understand how this mechanics this game works. In Hoi 4, you've got this build up 1st of September 1939. In this game, there isn't really a build up period. I guess it's a period, but significantly longer. And for, for the most part, you are going to be the aggressor in this game because that's more fun, right? So when it comes down to it, the basic weapons are small arms. There's your basic weapons, but it's a little bit more complex than that. There are a lot more extra bits of little pieces of equipment. So you've got like an anti-air gun, rifle, rocket launcher. You've got an anti-tank launcher, which are also required for infantry. And then you've got like the same old regular artillery, which would be just as it functions in Hearts of Mine 4. You also have command and conquer equipment. I, that's right, command and conquer. I read that correctly right. And that's something that is required for basic infantry divisions as well. So how do we figure out what divisions required? You go into division planner, create a new division, select the basic infantry type, light infantry. And you can see on the right hand side, all the things here that are required to make up this division. So you need small arms, you need the anti-tank guns, I think. That's the anti-air guns, and you also need the CNC equipment, command and conquer equipment, remember that. So these are the raw pieces of equipment. So just the raw equipment are uh, these four. One, two, three, four. As long as you're producing enough of these, you'll be good. And the way I see it is these are the raw equipments you are gonna use, and everything else you add on to that are like additional optional extras. And uh, air in this game is pretty strong because you know what? Mod air in the modern age is pretty damn strong. And you can see here there's multiple types of planes. You've got regular attack helicopters, transport helicopters. You've got air superiority fighters, multi role fighters, strike fighters, light fighters. Uh, a lot of planes and whatnot. Lots of planes. For the most part, if you want to focus on one specific plane, my advice to you would be the multi role fighter or the strike fighter. The difference is strike fighters are more expensive, but they do more damage on ground support and air strategic missions. When multi roles kind of have a little bit more toward air superiority, where air superiorities do one's functional role, which is air superiority. Well, duh. But what is the exploit? This wouldn't be a feedback gaming video without exploits, would it? No, we are gonna go for light strike fighters slash trainers. In this case, we can produce these planes, Hawks. And they are incredibly cheap to produce, 11 production costs. And the stats are quite frankly rubbish, uh, but it doesn't matter because I've noticed how Survivor 4 doesn't behave correctly. 
if you boost these stats too high. Regardless of how high these stats go, the game's engine isn't really built for it. It's the kind of same problem the Great War mod has when they reduce those numbers too low and weird things start to happen. This mod seems to have that problem as well. So in this case, my advice to you is spam out the crappiest, the weakest, the most pathetic, out of date, Cold War planes. In this case, the BAE Hawk. We're gonna go here, look at this list of planes. Uh, updated equipment, scroll down. Where are you, Mr. Hawk? There you are, the BAE Hawk. And we assign all the other guys onto that. There we go, beautiful. And we need uh, light metals. There's only four different equipment in this game. There's oil, steel, uh, light metal, and uh, uh, technology metals. So that's simplified, but everything else is more complex. Yay. So the areas you guys are probably going to question the most is what's the whole deal, Leo, with all these division types? Well, as I said to you, the raw infantry requires four kind of set pieces of equipment for light infantry, and there's lots of additional pieces of equipment that are required to add on special battalions. The combat width in this mod, instead of 80, it's 120 combat width. So, in a normal game of High 4, you'd go for 40 combat width. That would be the most optimal way of compressing as much firepower in a narrow space. Yep. Well, in Millennium Dawn, it's 60. Seems straightforward, right? 60 to 120. There's your combat width. That's how you fit it in as much damage as possible within a space of combat. To make things more complex, battalions have different combat widths. That's right. So these are not all two combat width or three for artillery. They're all a little bit different. As you can see, as I scroll through these, engineers are, I believe, two combat width where all the other ones are three. Yeah, so you'd have to have a little fiddle around to get that ideal 60 combat width, but that's what we're gonna aim for anyway. And we'll exercise our one division to get to that area. Be aware you can add on a lot more extra stuff that you would normally have to add on, and you can also add on lots of extra support things as well, which is always nice to know. I'm just gonna be spamming out lots of crappy infantry in this game because that's what I do in Hearts of Volume 4 anyway, and that seems to be the most effective. So maybe it'll be most effective in this game. Maybe, we'll find out. Let's go. Let's play a little bit of the game, and then we'll talk a little bit more about how you declare war and how you go on your little conquest to draw out modern borders. This is your politics screen. Look at this, how beautiful this is. Whoa, so many political parties, so many things and powers and... Oh man, so many good things, right? Taxes and policies and... Ugh. Our Hearts of Iron 4 video with Feedback Gaming wouldn't be the same without a little bit of outrage. So, uh, the Falcons policy? Yeah, let's give the Falcons... <laughs> Back to Argentina. Back? Did you hear what I just said? I said back. How mad are you? Tell me in the comments how mad you are right now. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is we need to be able to change political party. Because I'm sorry, Tony. You just won't do. So we're going to go click on this expand part of you. And then you get all the political parties. Only thing you need to know about is these are the main political groups, okay? These are all the groups of parties that kind of have share similar ideologies. Did you hear what I said? Similar, they're not the same, they're similar. And what we're gonna do is boost the queen. UK independence party, ah, think not. I will want some queen power. Yes, that's right, more queen power. The short version of this guys is you boost the specific party that you want to get in power in this case, you boost it from here. And then you find the political group that it's a part of. Because this House of Windsor is part of the Nationalist group. Yeah, that's probably going to trigger a few people in the comments. And then you go into decisions and boost that group. The Nationalist group. And this will, over time, boost that ideology for your nation. So in this case, it will be the Nationalist bar, which will grow bigger and bigger. At that point, you've got two choices. You can either try, try to throw an election to try and get that party in power. Or two, you can fire a civil war, or whatever's easier. I don't know. In this case, we'll, we'll see what comes up first. What I want to make sure is the largest national party is going to be the House of Windsor. The Queen Party. Absolute monarchies. And you have to pay 100 political power to gain some more support. Now, right now, House of Windsor is almost the best party. And now we've decided the future of Britain is a new path. There we go. We boost that the way all the way now. We have 5% of support for the Nationalist Party, which is the House of Windsor Party, which is a really strange thing to say. You'll understand if you're British. So we can't go any further on this one specific party that I want to get in power. So now we need to boost the ideology of this specific party. In this case, the Nationalists. Now you go into decisions, and then we need to boost the Nationalist propaganda campaign. This will cost money as well. What does money do in this game? <laughs> it's something potentially the modders are going to add to and probably make a really cool mechanic of the game. But as it currently stands, it doesn't actually interfere with the game that much. So I don't worry too much about it. Just rack up a ton of debt and worry about it tomorrow. Worry about it another day. All right, look at this. Pumping out tons of planes. Amazing. Amazing. So now I'm going to go into our planes and deploy a absolute ton of them. Deploy all of them. 400 wings. Drop it in half and do air exercises. 
and we'll get these boys to level three. A new path to the right, which gains us some support for the Islamic Middle Eastern faction. So here we go. There's an option here to fire a civil war, and we need 20% support for the House of Windsor. As we boost the faction portion of the Daily Nationalists, we'll gain more support for the House of Windsor. When we get 20%, we can fire a civil war and flip really, really, really quickly. Otherwise, we can do it the democratic method. That's right, you've got two ways of doing this. But to do it democratically, you are going to need the majority party to win the election to be the House of Windsor. I'll admit, that's going to be pretty tricky. I won't lie. Now, it'll probably cost a lot less political power if we just fire a civil war. Look, they're the third largest political party in the UK. Doesn't Britain love their monarchy? Wow! To the right! Oh, who is this guy? Never heard of this guy. Who is he? Who is he? And now we're going to go for Empower the Throne. The throne room is the one that will lead from here. Oh, um, now we have support to fire the civil war. So I'm going to delete this one division. Dave's going to do his fancy little shenanigans as he always does. He'll fire a civil war. Yeah? Ah! Oh, it just looks like Northern England are the one that are faithful to the queen. Sounds about right. New division and a single militia. Oh, funnily enough, they don't require CNC equipment. That's interesting. And there we go. I make one of those. And we spam those babies out. Loads of them. If you're new to my videos, you might be like thinking to yourself, what is this shenanigans? Why is Dave creating divisions? Isn't he going to worry about the troops pressing against his border? Is he not worried about that? No, no, of course not. Of course not. And 20%. Boom. And drop all those boys. Boom. Boom. And boom. And just push into them. Wipe them out. All of them. Oh, damn. So, what's the question here? You're probably wondering, why has the enemy not got divisions? Well, there was no divisions to begin with, so there's no army to split in half. And the AI has to make divisions from the templates they were given at the start of the game. I made this division, specifically this one, after when I fired the Civil War. So, they wouldn't have this template, so that's the reason why they can't create it. And the AI doesn't rub its brain cells together to figure out that it needs to make a new division. So, in this case, I just completely and utterly steamroll them. There's a chance they might make one division, but I'll have so many divisions I'll be able to just swarm them and completely eat them up. And look at that, all done. And... Boop! And there we go. A united kingdom, or should I say, in this case, change the flag? Oh, yeah, united kingdom. That's a kingdom to be proud. Look at that flag. Britain, and look at this. The queen, the glorious queen, with a total support of 90% support for her ideology. Now, that is a queen to be proud of, right? Delete all the divisions apart from one. Exercise. Change it to that division that we were using before, which will be this one. So, the blue works like democracy in Hearts of Iron 4. You cannot justify our nations unless that nation has created some world tension. You can reduce the threshold of world tension that you can declare by going into foreign international law and reducing this down. But you cannot go all the way to the bottom unless you are a nationalist. So you can go global intervention, and if a nation generates 15% world tension, you can manually justify them and take them out. And you can see this case, I need 35% to justify on my goals. That's because we have the current goal of regional interventionalism. That won't do, though. We need new... I was about to say liberalism. Neo-imperialism. <laughs> and that will allow us to justify on any nation with no requirement of world tension. Yay! So that's what we're going to do. Just be aware that in this mod, democracies behave like they do in Hearts of Iron 4, where you need to have... They need to generate world tension for you to justify on them. And right now, because we have become monarchist rulers, we now do not allow any kind of uh, elections. Elections, no. Allow democracies in the UK. You can click this if you want to, but I don't know why you would. I mean, democracies, are, are they really worth all that fuss? Are they really worth all that fuss? I don't think so. Here we go. Empower the throne. And where are we going to go for imperialism? Imperialism is my favorite. Why? Because I get free justifications on lots of old empire areas of the world. Make the queen proud. That's right. Bill Clinton forms a new government. What an interesting twist. Bill Clinton staying on for his third term. Hmm. Is that legal? Hmm. Now you've got an option to either push into Africa and then push into the Raj, or take out Ireland, or take out Quebec. That's up to you. And why not make a West African empire with that as well? Why not? Why not, right? Why, why, why not? So we're playing a bit of a waiting game right now. We're just waiting for the focuses, and we're also pushing towards uh, neo-imperialism, uh, which requires a lot of political power, so we have to wait. Okay, we're going to go down the path of network-centred warfare, which just seems to be more offensive, where this is defensive and this is, like, extremely defensive, but with weak troops, like guerrilla fighters. So we'll go for network. Wow, look at these planes. Amazing. 
Also in this mod, you can exercise to level three, which is uh, unique. Here we go. Exercise some more planes. Get loads of aircraft. Okay, let's make the ideal division, okay? So we're going to add on three lots of artillery, 23 combat width, an extra engineer. And then the rest we're going to pad out with lots and lots of light infantry. And this should be enough to hit... 40, yep, yeah. and we've got 58, then we thought we add one more engineer on, 60 combat worth. Okay, so we get justifications now, and colonial outposts can go for Gambia, Benin, and Sierra Leone. So we get outposts in Africa here, and we can go for those right now. We've got lots of islands around the world, so we'll use one of those. Gambia has only one division, so they look like ripe for the pickings. Go for one of these islands, which is horrendously difficult to click. you got to zoom in, and then go there. We need at least, oof. Four of those divisions. I want to say three. Bring a few more. One thing, good thing to do is just like add more than you need and hop into here and just see how behind you are. And it'll give you an idea where you want to assign your factories. 220 days and the 385 artillery, 445 and small arms, 3,600. 3, wow. Okay. So definitely two on there. One, one, one. And then three, and then boom, there we go. So field marshals are not a thing in this game. It's actually generals are the ones above lieutenants. So there you go. Someone in the comments is going to go like, like real life. It's not real life. This is a computer game. All right, we're low on manpower. And the way we fix that is to change our spending on our military. Right now, we're currently on small spending. I think we should probably go for maybe sizable. And that will give us more recruitable pops. And there we go. So we can take off some of those divisions now. We've got five of those divisions. And right now, we just need to focus on artillery and small arms. Here we go. Colonial outpost. And we'll go all the way to restoring the Ziraj as well. Move you to here and start the plan. Oh, and this guy is actually a Vader as well. How convenient. Start with decent sized navy as well. And we'll deploy them right here. Using the term Raj as a name for India is more than just politically questionable. However, the British government has recently changed its official name of the Indian Republic and British diplomatic documents to the formerly British Raj. <laughs> oh, I skipped it, but I actually left the EU as well. <laughs> Firing a civil war immediately ejects you from the EU. There you go. No more EU. And that's how you do it, boys. Civil war through monarchist uprising. Yes, that's what happened. Okay, Navy. Navy invasion support. No one's a greenie anymore. Go. Claire of Gambia. And also, we can also go to Neo-Imperialism. Yay. And we're about to get wrecked. I oh, can zoom in really far. Like, oh, wow, look at this. The freight has beaten Gambia. And confusingly, we're the same color now as the nation that's around it. You know what? Let's justify. Let's do this. 130 days. Boom. And now we can do an invasion to Sierra Leone. And they're currently at war with uh, their neighbors. Huh. All right, go. I don't quite understand this here. 40% research bonus for industry. There aren't any industry in this game. <laughs> I don't get it. All right, planes, do your business. I think they'll probably arrive too late. No? Yeah, no, they've arrived. God, the planes travel so fast. Boom, eat that. And then finally, from here to Benin. Oh my god, are we going to make a glorious West African Empire? That's very historical. That's exactly what Britain did, right? 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 I love the fact that the uh, the, the divisions arrive on, like, freights. Man, the days of uh, D-Day landing vehicles, and we resorted to mounting the beaches with freight uh, cargo ships. Oh my god. Pew, 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 pew. The Benin Special Forces have been eliminated. Got him. It's suspended elections, but we have the ability to fire an election. So tempted to click that. <laughs> Senegal. You are next. You, pew, pew, pew. Who's next? Guinea. You are next. The many guineas of Africa. Division so strong. Takes on single-handedly tank division. Defending capital of Senegal. Can he do it? Of course he can. Victory. Next. The beginning of the war on terror is on. Meanwhile... Lizzie plowing through Africa <laughs> and nobody cares. And unfortunately, the world doesn't want to trade with us because we're, uh, we're being a bully. Oh, well. Now with full air support, do your worst. That's right. They do air superiority and they do close air support. And this is the cheapest fighter that we do. Marvelous. Denmark leaves the European Union. I don't even know what to say about that. F. 
never ends. It never ends over and over again. One last known mechanic of this game is you can invest in other countries to influence their politics. You can just spend your political power, so you right click on a nation and use this magnet to spend 100 political power to get 16 influence. Oh, well, that's rubbish. Let's do it a little bit more hardcore. You can left click on your debt and you gain more loans. Uh, money doesn't seem to really matter in this game, so just get lots of loans. Yay. Then left click on the nation and make investments. Oh, investments for lots of civilian factories. Oh, we want to put so many civvies inside of you. Oh. And you can see now our investment is incredibly high. Uh, and then we say economic exploitation. <laughs> and also attempt to coup. And, uh, oh, it didn't work. The coup didn't work. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, but on the other hand, we did get to manipulate their economy. Uh, so now we can trade with them at a lesser cost. And we take some of their civilian factories for free. Because <laughs> that's the way it works, guys. When you invest in a nation, you get to exploit it. <laughs> Explosion. Investing is exploitation. That's right. Uh... Okay, world tension's gotten so high now for my little endeavors. They're all joining factions. Yay. And now it has joined the blue faction. Where's the blue faction? The Organization for Peace and Prosperity. <laughs> Who's in this faction? Do I care? I don't think so. Oh my god, the spam for joining factions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're at war with now. We're at war with Niger. And Unita. I don't even know who they are. All right, who's left? Nope, everyone's peaced out. Apart from this civil war faction here. Okay, I actually really don't care. Oh, but Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit up some sweet Nigeria. Oh, look at that beautiful West Africa, United Kingdom, glorious. Is there a way of forming a British Empire in this mod? I really don't know, but I really hope so. Whoa, 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 whoa. And for some reason, Nigeria has got friends with Spain and the Netherlands and Poland and Sweden. Huh. Better send the Navy home. China has declared war on the Republic of China. And Japan is defending them. <laughs> um, what have I done? What have I done? What a disgusting chain of events. And China is now at war with the United States. Oh boy. I seem to be dealing with a lot more volunteers than I would normally as well. Ah, there's a lot of troops here that aren't, uh, Nigerian. Yes, and if you're wondering, the crappy training planes are doing a jolly good job. Yay, peace conference. I don't know what went off there, but that peace conference was, uh, dividing amongst many European powers. <laughs> How? Why? I really don't know. Russia has puppeted Ghana. Yeah. Russia's also puppet in Nigeria as well. <laughs> Why? I don't even know. Oh boy, this doesn't look good. Seems to be a slight overlap effect. Maybe they'll <laughs> sink themselves. Spain, what have you done? You love the British monarchy, right? And you're using Russian tanks. I don't like that. That really upsets me even more. Not looking good, Elizabeth. Uh, it's probably looking like you may have to step down. Yep. It's looking that way. You must retire, Elizabeth II, and be replaced with Thomas Butler. He's tech savvy, which is always good to know in the 21st century digital world, right? Who is this guy? No fucking clue. And maybe we should hold an election. <laughs> Thomas has tried to throw a massive campaign pie and has failed miserably. What a failure. Oh, Thomas, what are you doing? You're meant to be tech savvy. Uh, but he's been re-elected anyway. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else we have? Retire Thomas. Gabriel Edwards. Who is these? Who are these people? Who are they? <laughs> no! And we are done. <laughs> and this is what happens when you vote for Brexit. Just to cover some of the questions people asked me about this mod so you can, guys could understand it. Uh, if you want to declare war on anyone, regardless of world tension, uh, you need to change to a nationalist party. There you go, nationalist. You do that by boosting them here, by spending political pie. Either throw an election or throw a coup. Oh, throw another coup. <laughs> and the north is broken away again. <laughs> oh, damn. It is the Labour Party versus the House of Windsor. Again, F. And then when you change to that ideology, you can change your foreign intervention law to neo-imperialism. 
and that will allow you to just define anyone regardless of world tension. That's a question everyone asks me, like, how do we declare war? Uh, when it comes down to money, you can either make investments or spend political power to boost them, and you can do little funky things like taking a bunch of the economy, or you can turn them into a puppet state, which is very difficult to do and very expensive. I won't recommend you do that, but it is definitely an option if you have a lot of money and you want to be like power hungry. Final question people are always going to ask me is about the division templates. Start off with the most basic template there is and work up from there. The most basic template is going to be the militia, which only requires three kinds of equipment: small arms, AG, ATGM and man pads that's right <laughs> every soldier carries a man pad you never know when it's time of the month and then you build up from this division and work from there and this is your basic infantry and the combat width you want to aim for is 120 so half of that will be 60 so aim for 60 combat width and that's the ideal template for this mod is that it is that all the questions you got any other questions comment below remember to subscribe if you don't subscribe for a hearts of iron 4 video it basically says you do not want to see any more hearts of iron 4 videos and remember guys every time you ring the bell icon when you subscribe it says a direct message into my inbox saying dave more hearts of iron 4 please exactly that hope you have a good day and i will see you guys next time i'll see you soon later later boys bye 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 Krigu, Andrew, Chris, Carl, Mark, Rasmus, Robert, Rooney, Combat Cookie. I love you the most.